Salam everyone. So I was asked this question, what is halal and what is haram according to the Quran only? Okay. So fairly common question and people have been going back and forth for probably hundreds and hundreds of years trying to find out what really is halal and what is haram. What I've done is I took out the actual root word hara and mean, right? That's the root word for this haram word and it occurs 83 times in the Quran in six derived forms okay so for instance appears 39 times as a form to verb harama 33 times as a nominal twice as a noun four times as a passive participle four times as a form to passive participle and then once as the form to passive participle harama so the idea here is that the same root word is being used in different contexts with different verb or noun formats. Now, of course, in you know Arabic, then you would know what these different forms of verbs are. But if you do not know Arabic, that's perfectly fine because the, the Quran is straightforward and that's exactly what we are going to unveil in this video. So now you know the word ha ra mean right that's the root word and it occurs 83 times the question is about halal and haram so moving forward what i'm going to do what i've done is simply first listed out all of the verses that contain these root letters so 83 verses contains the root letter ha ra mean right but we are concerned with the food only related verses in other words what should we eat and what should we not eat? What is halal and what is haram, according to the Quran? So here on the first page, let me move to the next one. So you can actually see all of these verses. And I'm going to provide this document to you if you really want this document. Uh, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to write a copy. So let me move forward. So these are all the verses. A little small, but you can see here, for example, first word harama appears at Chapter 2, which is Surah Baqarah, 173 verse, where God says, Inna ma harama alaykum, and so forth, right? So the rest of the verses, of course, contain the same root word, but they may not contain or they're not related to food. So similarly, let me move forward, and I'm just going to scroll through it. Whether it's a nominal adjective, that's fine. Wherever this word is used, right? Whether it's used for Masjid al Haram, for example, even. Right or any root word, I've listed it all here in this document. If it's used as a noun, it's also listed. Passive participle, form two, is also listed. Here we go. So finally, out of all the context or all the instances of this word, the food-related verses are as follows. So what I've done is I've shortlisted all the verses, and we are going to go through each one of them in context. So by the end of this video, you will really understand what really is halal and what is haram, according to the Quran. So the first word, food-related word, that appears is in chapter 2, and then we have chapter 5. It appears thrice in chapter 5 about food, and then chapter 6. We have a couple of times in chapter 7, chapter 10 once, chapter 16, and chapter 66. Chapter 22 also talks about the explicit right of livestock. And you should always remember the name of God only instance clear right given to humanity, right? So we're going to go through all of these verses so you understand what the Quran is actually talking about in each of these verses when we talk about what is halal and what is haram in the Quran itself. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the first instance, which is chapter 2, verse 173 and verse 174. Perfect. So before I move forward to verse 173 that talks about food, let's take a look at a little bit of context. So just a couple of verses up, starting from 170, what God is saying is, is that when it is said to them, follow what God has sent down, they say, nay, we follow that we're in we found our fathers, right? Even though their fathers did not reason, right? So the word 
The reasoning is Ya'kelun, right? So Avalokana Aba'okum La Ya'kelun. So even the forefathers or the, you know, they don't reason, right? And it talks about in verse 171, and the example of those who are indifferent to warning, is like the example of one who yells to what hears not, save a call and a shout, right? So these are deaf, dumb, and blind, and of course, they do not reason, right? So the context, of course, we understand that it's people who don't reason, who just follow blindly their forefathers or their parents or the world at large or the society and so forth. So the Quran clearly tells us to reason. So within this context, of course, we are going to reason what is halal and what is haram. Perfect. Let's move to verse 172, and then we'll talk about food verses 173 and 174. So verse 172 simply says, Yahyolizinamanu, O you heat warning, Flu mintayibat, so eat of the good things that we have provided, right? So the word tayyibat means good. Now, of course, good is a could be relative, right? So something good to me may not be good to you. But here, God is saying, O you believers, or O you heat warning, eat of the good things that we have provided you. And be grateful to God, if it be him you serve. Washkuru lillahi in kuntum iyahu ta'budun, right? Of course. Remember Surah Fatiha, right? We say, right? So that's exactly what is being implied here as well. So we should be grateful. And then here are the verses for food. Now you understand the context, right? And of course, we are going to reason because above we talked about reasoning. And then here comes the verse 173, who says, Innama harrama. So here's this word, right? What is unlawful, right? So he has but made unlawful to you. And this is, of course, unlawful, which is carrion. Second is blood is unlawful. Then you have the flesh of swine, or lahm al is unlawful. And that dedicated to other than God is also unlawful. But of course, there's an exception. So God gives an exception. But whoso is forced, neither desiring nor transgressing, then, of course, fala ismi alayhi. So, no falsehood is against him. So, if you're in a situation where you really have no choice or you're being forced to do any of these above things, then there's no falsehood against you. So, now you know simply what is halal, which means all good things are halal. And then, of course, minus the ones that are listed are halal. That means that. Apart from these items listed as being unlawful, all other things are good. So you can eat it, right? That's why it says, Innama harama alaykum. He has but made unlawful. All right, so let's scroll down. And God is forgiving, merciful. So this was verse 173. Let's go to 174. Great. So verse 174 of chapter 2 says, Those who conceal what God has sent down of the law, and sell it for a cheap price. So what, what essentially is happening here is all of a sudden we're talking about what is unlawful to eat. Now, the next verse says, those who conceal what God has sent down. So people who say, well, no, 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 you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, you cannot eat this, you cannot eat any other thing. Or bunch of other things and believe you me people have come up with so many things that they have made unlawful so those are these people those who conceal what god has sent down of the law and sell it for a cheap price they eat into their bellies only fire and god will not speak to them on the day of resurrection nor will he increase them in purity and they have a painful punishment so now you fully understand the context of at least these two verses right starting from reasoning and then what is halal, which means all good things, except the ones that are made unlawful that we just talked about. And then if you conceal what God has sent down, then of course you are eating, right? They eat with their bellies only fire. Perfect. All right, let's move to the next context of the next set of verses which talk about food. So I'm going to talk about next is 
chapter number 5, verses 3 and 4, and then in the same chapter, verse 87, and then verse 96. So let's move on. Let's go to chapter 5 and take a look at these verses that talk about food. And just kind of remember the context that we've been talking about so far, right? In chapter 2, verse 173 and 174. We'll continue on and see what chapter 5 has to say, what is halal and what is haram. Perfect. So right now we're on chapter 5, which is Surah Al-Ma'idah, and then verse 3. So here it starts with forbidden to use carry-on. So what that means is it's the same verse that we just talked about in chapter 2. So this is unlawful. Carry-on is unlawful. Well, dam is also unlawful, which is blood which is also referring back to chapter 2, verse 173 and 174. Same thing. Let's scroll down. Then we have in the flesh of swine, which is, again, repeated from chapter 2, 173 and 174, right? Well, the flesh of swine is also unlawful. Dedicated other than God is also being repeated once again. Now, the next set of three things are unlawful. The strangled, right? So eating an animal that is strangled is unlawful. And the beaten is unlawful. And the fall, the animal that falls and dies and cannot, that's unlawful, right? So the three additional things that are made unlawful are strangled, beaten, and fall. The rest of the items being made unlawful in chapter 5, verse 3 and 4 are the same things that were talked about in chapter 2, 173 and 174. And then, of course, and the gourd is also made unlawful. And the eaten by the beast of prey, save what you slaughter, is also unlawful. And the sacrifice upon an altar is also unlawful. And that you seek a parchment by dividing arrows, that is also made unlawful. So several additional items are made unlawful within verses of chapter 5, verse 3 and 4, right? Now you know that things that are being made unlawful. Now, the real crux of the matter is, if you reason, right, that's what we need to do here, that God is mentioning things that are unlawful. He's not talking about things that are lawful, right? Because what is lawful? He just mentioned, he said, tayyibat, so all good things are lawful, except the ones that are being explicitly listed. That's what we're actually going through the list. So apart from what is listed, everything else is lawful, right? All good things are lawful. Because the question, of course, comes into mind, what does good mean? What is the definition of good? Well, that's exactly what the definition of good is. Everything is good except the ones that are listed as being unlawful. That's reason. All right, great. So let's move to the next set of verses. So I'm going to go next to the same chapter, chapter 5, Surah Al-Ma'idah, and verse 87 that talks about perfect. So chapter 5, verse 87, simply says, O you heed warning, forbid not the good things that God has made lawful for you. So, again, the word is tayyibat, good things. So do not make good things, right, that God has made lawful for you, and who are you to make them unlawful, right? That's what the verse starts as. And transgress not. God loves not the transgressors. Verse 88, and eat of what God has provided you lawful and good, right? So two words, halal and tayyiba, right? Which is lawful and then tayyiba. And we know what lawful is, right? Good things are lawful, except the ones that are listed and made unlawful. And be in prudent fear of God in whom you are believers, right? So that's what verse 87 touches upon in verse 88 also of chapter 5. So same context, right? You follow along from Surah Baqarah to Surah Maida, you'll notice that wherever this word occurs that relates to food, it's speaking within the same context, right? 
Great, let's move to the next verse. The next set of verses we are going to look at is the same chapter, chapter 5, Surah al maida and verse 96. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that verse says about food. Great. So, chapter 5, verse 96, God says, Made lawful for you is the game of sea and the food thereof as a provision. So, a new thing has been made lawful, right? Which is game of sea, fish, for example, right? For you and for those who travel, but forbidden, well, hurrama alaykum, right? But forbidden you is the game of the land as long as you are forbidden. So what this is saying that what is lawful is the game of sea and what is forbidden as long as, or the game of land as long as you are forbidden. And be in prudent, prudent fear of God to whom you will be gathered, right? So that's simply verse 96 talks about the word lawful, but we're concerned about the word hurrama, right? But forbidden. Use the game of the land as long as you are forbidden. And in one of my next videos, I'm going to also talk about what is the context behind the Masjid al-Haram and what is what was happening, what was made unlawful, why was hunting made unlawful, um, and the months, the four months, and so forth. So that, that is a separate context that I'm going to talk about in a separate lecture. But right now we're just focusing on what is halal and what is haram. Great, so let's move to the next set of verses. We're going to look at chapter 6 now, verse 119, and then the same chapter, verses 138 and 151. Great, so we're in chapter 6, which is Surah Al-An'am, right? Cattle. And then verse 119, that's what we're going to look at. So here, it starts with, وَمَا لَكُمْ أَلَّا تَأْكُلُوا مِمَّا And why should you not eat? Of that over which the name of God has been remembered, right? So again, recall from the previous context of verses, same thing. Azukirasmullah, which means if the name of Allah is read upon that food, you can eat. That's lawful. That's good too. When he has set out and detailed to you waqad fassala lakum, right? Which means detail to you what is forbidden. Harama alaykum. You save that you have compelled thereto, and many are led astray by their vain desires without knowledge. Thy Lord, He is best aware of transgressors. Right? Same set of words, same set of context is being also provided in chapter six here, verse one one nine. Why should you not eat of what is over which the name of God has been remembered, when He has set out in detail to you? Now, of course, this book is complete and this is a detailed book. So, which means that whatever is forbidden, and we went through the list so far, is unlawful and forbidden. The rest of the items are good. If it's good, then it's lawful. So that's exactly what this verse also talks about within the same context of what is halal and what is haram. Let's move on to the next set of verse in the same chapter. So same chapter, chapter 6, verses 138 through 151, talks about the entire narrative of what people used to do, how they made things, and how they made portions, and so forth. So I'm going to skim through some of these, but importantly, you can simply go through these fairly straightforward sort of like narrative that is being explained on and around food, right? So verse 138, they talk about, and they say these cattle, and tell the taboo, none is to eat them, same whom we will. So here, clearly, people themselves are actually telling other people, right? This is haram and this is halal. That's exactly what is happening, especially in the context of cattle. And because they say, well, you cannot eat cattle, right? For example, the next set of verses says, the cattle whose backs are made unlawful, and cattle over which they remember not the name of God, right? So these are individuals or people who actually claim and they say, well, you cannot eat this cattle because, you know, the backs are made unlawful, for example, or the cattle over which they remember not the name of God as an invention against him. 
he will require them for what they invented, right? So clearly there are people who are saying, well, this is haram, you cannot eat that, right? All right, let's scroll down. And they say, that which is in the bellies of such cattle is exclusively for our males and forbidden our wives. So once again, there are people who are actually making things unlawful and changing things and and, and so forth. And this is a perfect example. So for example, whatever is in the bellies of such cattle is exclusively for the males and of course not for the wives. And if it be dead, they're all partners therein. So once again, this entire narrative goes down on what you can eat and how individuals or people actually changed by saying, well, this is haram and this is halal. So I'm going to continue down and I'm going to skim through some of these and made unlawful what God provided them as an invention about God. So people used to make things up, right? So people used to make things up and that's exactly what is even happening today, people are making things up. Well, just by saying this is haram. And that's not according to the Quran, Quran itself, right? We make things haram, people make things haram because of their own vain desires. And that has nothing to do with the Quran itself. God says they have gone astray and they're not rightly guided. And the verse continues, talks about the date palms, the crops, the olive, the pomegranate, right? Alike and not alike, eat of the fruit thereof when it bears fruit. So now you know you can and render its due on the day of the harvest. So and commit not excess, right? So I'm going to continue talking about the rest of the verses here. Verse one forty two talks about and the cattle for burden and for skin, eat of what God has provided you and follow not the footsteps of the shaitan. He's an open enemy to you. And then God talks about the pairs of sheep and goats and so forth. Verse one forty three he says pull, which means O prophet, say thou, right? So say to these people, has he forbidden the two males or the two females? So once again, clearly the prophet is actually questioning those individuals, people who made things haram, right? Just by their vain desires, that has he forbidden two males? Or in other words, has God forbidden the two males or the two females? If what the wombs of the two females contain, inform me without knowledge if you be true. So the, the prophet is clearly asking these people of why they do things of making two males and two females haram, right? And then verse 144 talks about and of camels too and oxen too, say thou, right? So once again, the prophet is being told to tell these people, has he forbidden the two males and two females, right? So again, the entire context, right, as you recall, as we move forward, talks about people who invent things, right? Who make things haram. So then, who is more unjust than he who invents a lie about God, that he might lead people astray without knowledge? So people don't have knowledge. They just say, well, this is haram. And then all of a sudden, it becomes haram because we follow those individuals who themselves don't really reason. Right? So the, the entire context starts with right reasoning. So we must reason. And this is a perfect example. Verse 145 says, Kul. So say thou. So the prophet is again told to say to these people, I find not in what I'm instructed anything made unlawful to one who would eat it, save it be carrier. Same word. That's again coming from Surah Al Baqarah. From Surah Al Ma'idah and then Surah Al An'am, right? So the Prophet is saying, I find not in what I'm instructed anything made unlawful, right? To one, except again, carry on is unlawful. Or blood poured forth, that is also rugged thumb, right? That is also made unlawful. And again, the same things that are made unlawful are also being reflected back in Surah Ma'idah and Surah Al Baqarah. Or the flesh of swine, continuing on. Same thing. This has been talked about back in Surah Al-Baqarah and Maida also, flesh of swine. And dedicated to other than God is also made unlawful. Same thing. So again, things are repeated here, right? Once again, it's been detailed out. Some things are repeated, some things are added, things that are made unlawful. So if you notice so far, 
whatever things that are being made unlawful are pretty much like five or you know four or five things that's about it the rest is all tayyib which means good things so you should eat them and it talks about those who hold to Judaism we made unlawful every animal with a claw right so this is specifically now for people who hold to Judaism for them it was made unlawful every animal with a claw and the ox and sheep we made unlawful to them the fat thereof so this was sort of like a punishment for the people who hold to Judaism save what their backs carry right so that was in the past but the Quran clearly talks about what is lawful now and things that are unlawful okay so when we talk about for those and who hold to Judaism, right? Which means we're talking about the past, right? For them, it was made every animal with a claw it was made unlawful. A couple of other things that were made unlawful for individuals who hold to Judaism was, of course, for the entrails and what is mixed with bone. Great. So let's take a look at the next set of verses. So we're going to go to chapter 7 now, verse 32 and 33, and then the same chapter, verse 50 and 51, right? So Let's take a look at what these verses have to say about food or what is halal and what is haram. Great. So we're on chapter 7, which is Surah Al-Araf, the elevations. And let's take a look at verse 32, which says, O Prophet, say thou, right? So God is instructing the Prophet to tell to the people. Man harama, who made unlawful the adornment of God, which he brought forth for his servants, and the good things of provision, what tayyibat min al right? So these are good things from the provision. Once again, tayyib, good things are lawful. Say thou, these are for those who heed warning in the life of this world exclusively on the day of resurrection. So straightforward. Thus, do we set out the detail, the proof for people who know? Kazalik and Fasilulaya, same word. Everything is detailed. The Kaumi Ya'lamun, people who know. Here, once again, clearly within the context, we see that God talks about good things as being lawful to eat, except the ones that are being listed and we've been talking about, right? So forth. Perfect. Let's move on to the next verse. Perfect. So, same Surah Al Araf, chapter 7. Let's take a look at verse 50 and then 51. That kind of gives you the context also. So the companions of the fire will call to the companions of the garden, pour forth upon us some water, or some of what God has provided for you. They will say, God has made both unlawful to those who spurn guidance while claiming virtue. Follow in Allah al-Kafir. So once again, the provisions that God provided will be made haram, right? to those people who are companions of the fire, Ashab and Na. Okay? And if I scroll down to let's say 51, because these are those people, those who took their doctrine as play and diversion. So clearly people took the doctrine, right? Provided for doctrine of God, and then they played with it. In other words, they changed it or they made up their own things or whatever whom the life of this world deceived. So this day, do we forget them? Even as they forgot the meaning of this day. And as they rejected our proofs, and we have brought them a decree, right? Which we have set out and detailed according to knowledge. Fasalnahu halal il. Okay? So once again, the context, same thing. Moving on, of provisions of God being lawful, but at the day of judgment, day of resurrection, those will be made unlawful to the people of fire. Great, let's move to the next set of verses. Perfect, so almost there. Let's go to chapter 16, verse 116 and 117, which talks about in the context of food. Perfect, so it's Surah Al-Nahal, chapter 16, verse 115, okay, which starts with, he has but made unlawful 
Same set of verses, right, that we've been pretty much talking about in the past where he has made unlawful to you what? Which is carrion, blood, flesh of swine, and that dedicated to other than God. Which, again, is exactly similar to going back to Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 173 and 174. Again, things are repeated in the Quran, right? So, but whoso is forced, neither desiring nor transgressing, God is forgiving and merciful. Exactly the same context, exactly almost the same verses as in chapter 2. Let's scroll down. And verse 116 talks about an ad not to what your tongue describes the lie. This is lawful and that is unlawful. So once again, there are people who say, well, you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, because that is haram, that is unlawful, right? That's exactly what God is saying. And add not to what your tongue describes, the lie. So who are we to make things lawful and unlawful, where God has explicitly told us what is unlawful, and the good things, all of those, all the rest of the good things are lawful, right? To invent lies about God. The yafru alallahi kazab, right? So we basically invent things. And that's the beauty of human beings, right? We just simply invent things without any knowledge, without any context, without even reflecting back on the Quran, and without reasoning. Great. Let's move on to the final set of verses that talk about food, haram, and halal. So we're into the last set of verses, chapter 66. That's where I'm going to go ahead next, from verse 1 through 4. By the way, this is chapter 16 that I just talked about. This is verse 115 and 116. So I'm going to make a correction here. You can also note this for yourself. Great. So let's move to chapter 66 and take a look at verses 1 through 4. Perfect. So chapter 66 is Surah Al-Tahrim, which is pretty interesting because relating directly to the Prophet himself, right? So the Surah starts with, of course, talking directly to the Prophet. So God is saying, O Prophet, right? Yahiyun Nabi, why makest thou unlawful that which God has made lawful for thee? So here, clearly the Prophet is has made something unlawful, and God is revealing the ayats or you know the, these verses just for the Prophet. That why have you made you know things unlawful? Which God has made lawful for thee. And here's the reason why the Prophet made things unlawful, right? Seeking to please thy wives, and God is forgiving mercy. Okay? So you cannot make things unlawful just because of your wives, or just because someone else says this is unlawful, or one of the, you know, anyone for that matter. You should only make things unlawful as stipulated in the Quran itself, right? Which is being detailed out. Five or six, about, about five or six things. That's about it. Because the entire context of the Quran doesn't talk about any other things except those five or six things that we've been talking repeatedly back and forth within these contexts of all of these chapters. So, and that's, you know, so what Tahrim clearly says, the Prophet made something unlawful. God is saying, why you make unlawful? Because of your wives? Because you seek to please thy wives? So God has ordained for you absolution from your oaths, right? And it kind of con continues on with uh, the narrative of making things unlawful. Great. So we went through all of the instances of the word haram, right? And halal, which means tayyib, good, lawful, and unlawful, or forbidden. The last set of verses, chapter 22 or 2234, explicit right livestock, should always remember the name of God, only instance clear right given to humanity. You can take a look at that as well. The idea here is that all of these food-related verses that we talked about within the context of what is haram and what is halal has been now you know, laid out to you. And because we reason, because God tells us to reason from the Quran, right? Not just blindly follow everything else. The Quran itself reasons. And 
after all of these verses that you've just went through, clearly, there's just, you know, five or six things, that's about it, that are unlawful, everything else is good. So if someone tells you that this is haram and this is halal, just ask them, does the Quran talks about these things? Does the Quran say that this is haram and this is halal? So who are we to make things haram and halal? And we've talked about those as well in the context of these verses because God is saying you cannot make things unlawful because of vain desires because that's, you know, there's a punishment attached to it. So we have to be really, really careful and be in prudent fear of God when we talk about what is haram and what is halal. So I hope this helps. I just wanted to detail out the concept of uh, what is haram and what is halal according to the Quran itself. Now, of course, if you go to and attach external stories to the Quran, for example, coming from external texts, and there's no limit to those, right? Every person has external text that relates to the Quran, right? See what someone else says. Here's what my you know leader says. Here's what this guy says. Here's the uh, you know coming back from the book of uh, Hadith, for example, and uh, there's so many other books. So all these are external texts. Has nothing to do with the Quran itself, right? Because these books are written by men and written way after the Quran and way after the death of the Prophet. So the Prophet clearly didn't write anything, right? And of course, you can welcome to review my video on why the Prophet did not write any hadith, right? Take a look at that video. But for now, just wanted to once again differentiate in easy terms. Quran is very simple, by the way, right? And you've noticed that all of these verses that we went through, it just talks about the same kind of unlawful things, five things on being unlawful, pretty much. And that's about it. Everything else is lawful. It's good. Okay? So, if you have any questions, post in the discussion area, and don't forget to, of course, subscribe and comment and hit that notification because I come up with these questions that people ask, and then, of course, I research and provide you the actual answers according to the Quran only. So I hope this helps. Wassalamu alaikum.